Hi, welcome to chapter 9, Gas Power Cycle. It's from the textbook, page 486. Objectives to evaluate the performance of gas power cycles for which the working fluid remains as gas throughout the entire cycle and all this will be covered uh, in this lesson. Okay, so we're only going to look at uh, auto and diesel because that is the um, that is the coverage of the chapter till yeah so all this is actually not in yeah so your syllabus actually stops right up to there the objective okay so uh basic consideration in the analysis of a power cycle so most powerful uh most power producing devices operate in cycle so what does it mean by cycle starts and ends at the same point yeah so ideal cycle uh, resembles uh, the actual cycle closely but it is made up to the totally or of internally reversible process so ideal cycle so ideal cycle is something that we actually assume that to be ideal you see the cycles encountered in actual devices are difficult to analyze because of the presence of complicated effect and that's the reason why the actual cycle is actually drifted away from the ideal yeah so the complicating effects such as friction and absence of uh, uh, of sufficient time for establishment of equilibrium conditions during the cycle so to make an analytical study of a cycle feasible we have to keep the complexity at the level minimal level manageable level and utilize some idealization okay so what i'm trying to say here is that let's look at this this is what's happening in your actual life the green line yeah what is actually okay if you look at this uh, the actual cycle huh, is the green dotted line that's what's uh, happening in your daily life yeah where else uh, the ideal cycle is the red line okay now we it's it's kind of like difficult to actually study the actual cycle you see when it comes to the tip here you don't know what is the pressure because it's not a sharp point like this that we can say okay the pressure is 100 yeah it is sort of like a curve and you don't know exactly when is it happening yeah and when it comes to here also look at that it's just a line you don't know where is it ending and where is it starting so but then when you idealize the cycle it's like a sharp point you know exactly where it's stopping where is it moving straight where is it like uh, the changes is actually happening so that's the reason when it comes to textbook yeah when it comes to textbook we always use ideal cycle yeah which means a cycle that resembles the actual cycle closely but is made up totally internally uh, totally of internally reversible process and as what you know from the previous lessons uh, the perfect most reversible cycles is actually the Carnot cycle yeah which has the highest thermal efficiency of all the heat engines operating between the same temperature levels unlike the ideal cycle there are totally reversible and unsuitable as a realistic model okay so that's the reason why we are actually looking at a Carnot cycle okay so uh, okay let me just go into the next one okay the idealization that you need to take or the simplification that you need to do in a power cycle without these three points it's very difficult for us to study on the cycle okay so the first point would be the cycle does not involve any friction therefore the working fluid does not experience any pressure drop as it flows in the pipes devices and such as heat exchangers okay so whenever a liquid is actually flowing in a in a bend or in a pipeline which is a bend or a device where there is a bend there is a pressure drop there is a heat loss so in this case what they are trying to say is we are going to ignore all that yeah all expansion and compression is in a quasi equilibrium manner remember what i told you about quasi equilibrium manner slow and steady yeah and the pipes connecting the various components and the systems are well insulated so there is no heat transfer and heat loss yeah between them so these are the idealization that need to be taken yeah so on a ts diagram the ratio of the area enclosed by the cyclic curve and the area under would be the heat addition process curve represents the thermal efficiency of the cycle any modification that increases the ratio of the two areas also increases the thermal efficiency yeah so uh, all this explanation is actually in the textbook page 487 
So uh, let me just uh, explain to you on the uh, PV and the TS diagram of the enclosed uh, process. Yeah, uh, you see this process is actually a cycle. So that's the reason why it goes to uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 and back to 1. Yeah. So this is the PV, PV, uh, PV graph and this would be the TS graph. Yeah, okay. Mm, and uh, these are actually the Kannan cycle. Example of a Kannan cycle. Okay. So, okay, let's move on to 9.2. So, the Carnot cycle and its value in engineering. The Carnot cycle is composed of four totally reverse, uh, reversible processes. What does it mean by reversible? It's a perfect process. Yeah, no irreversibility is happening in the process, like what we have ex I have explained to you in the previous classes. Isothermal. Isothermal means temperature is constant, but heat is adding yeah and then we have isentropic entropy is constant and then we have isothermal heat rejection and isentropic compression so literally what uh, this pv diagram this is how it looks for the carnot cycle and this is the ts diagram for the carnot cycle so this is the movement can you see you know q to two uh, one to two we have heat coming in okay and then two to three there is isentropic the, the pressure is actually dropping, okay, because it's an expansion. And then we have 3 to 4, yeah. Uh, 3 to 4 would be isothermal heat addition, uh, heat rejection. Heat is going out. And then we have 4 to 1. It's isentropic again. This is plotted on the PV diagram. Now, the same scenario plotted on TS diagram will look something like this. So, isentropic, can you see? The, the entropy is constant. Entropy is constant. And then we have isothermal. The temperature is constant. The temperature is constant. So it's actually the same scenario, but it's being plotted in two different graphs. So this will be the arrangement, the arrangement for this uh, plots. You understand? Now? Okay. So this is an isothermal compressor where heat is going out, and an isothermal uh, turbine. The Q is going in. So this is a steady flow Carnot engine. An example of a steady flow Carnot engine. Let me just take you to uh, an uh, example. So, this would be the efficiency for the Carnot, um, uh, Carnot uh, where is 1 minus TL over TH. And yeah? this is the formula for efficiency for Carnot engine. Okay. So, let's look at this. And this is a derivation question, but do not worry. You will not get any derivation questions in your, uh, in your exam. Yeah, it's mostly uh, what's covered is uh, in this topic is your diesel engine and auto engine yeah, of course but you still need to know this yeah okay show that the thermal efficiency of a current cycle operating between the temperature limits of th and tl is solely a function of two temperature given in equation 9.2 so you need to prove this formula yeah coming back to here so what do you have here q in q in is actually happening between 1 to 2 right so you take s2 minus s1 that's how it is. And uh, multiply with TH because TH is constant. And what is Q out? Q out will be between happening between 3 and 4. So that's why it's 3 minus 4. Multiply with TL because that is the value that's constant here. Okay. Now, as you know, what is efficiency? Efficiency is work net divided by Q in. How much Q you're putting in and how much work that's being produced. So, uh, if I open up this, yeah, what is W work net? Work net is Q in minus Q out right divided by q in so when you rearrange this you will get that one minus okay what is q in plug it here and what is q out you put this here and then when you cancel off uh, open and cancel off that's a bit of maths here you will get the final formula which is proven that this is the Carnot engines efficiency yeah so this is the uh, I'm going to, uh, this is the end of uh, chapter 9.1 and 9.2. I'll meet you in the next uh, video.